um, product. So Annette, I can see your screen. Why don't you go ahead and take it away? Well, hello and welcome everyone. I'm glad everybody could join. Um, a lot of times I find that once we get Management Reporter installed, um, we always kind of look at it as like maybe a second phase to maybe be able to distribute the reports out to our end users electronically or you know so that they can view things online. And a lot of times some of the functionalities of Web Viewer kind of get put to the wayside because we're we're focused on let's get the reports created, let's make sure that the numbers work, like you know, we make them look pretty so that we can print them. Um, but we maybe sometimes lose the functionality of the web viewer. So we'd like to focus today's session on what can you do with the web viewer and maybe getting a little bit into um, what you can do with report collaboration and um, the interactiveness that you can have with uh, doing things within the web viewer. But to start that off, one of the functionalities that kind of enhances web viewer <clears throat> is report groups. And I don't know how many of you are currently actually using report groups, but what a report groups allow you to do is essentially run a group of reports. So say you have month end and you have five or six reports and maybe that's even a small number pardon me that you like to run all at the end of the month and be able to distribute those out to your your end users or even you just need to have them all run what report groups allow you to do is to essentially run all of those reports at the same time you can change the company that you're actually running the report for in the detail level, the provisional level, and you can also choose the report date that you're running all the reports for. So even if you had to go back and run, like say, a historical version of the report, say you need to go back and run December reports for some reason, you could come into the report group and you could choose December as your report date and you would be able to run all those reports for December. So there's lots of different ways that you can actually go through this process, but on a high level, you know, that's what report groups allow you to do. So with report groups, it allows you to publish to a library. So well, even if you're just doing regular reports, you're still publishing to a library, but with the report group, it allows you to be a little bit more flexible as to like where you put things in the library. So for example, say your library structure was set up with years, and you want to be able to keep a historical repository of final versions of reports in, you know, categorized by month. You So you have a folder structure set up where you've got your year and you've got your month, You've got three different ways that you can actually decide where to actually publish those reports to in the library. The first one is on the report definition here. So on each individual report, if you go to the output and distribution tab, you'll have an option to be able to choose which directory, which folder that you actually want to publish your report to. The second option is on the actual group distribution tab of the group report you can choose the, the library folder that you actually want the group distribution to go to. And the third option is if you want individual reports to go to a different location than the group distribution, then you can click on the report distribution tab and then you can choose um, to either override the individual report locations and then whether you want to have the reports themselves go to the same location as the group directory or you want to then send the reports to you know its own directory. So when you generate that report group is actually going to open up a web page in the web viewer. All right? And depending on the reports that you had in the report group, you are now going to have a link to each of the reports that are in that report group. So each green box represents a different report group. So from here you can either click on the, the individual green box and it will open up your individual reports, which some of you may have already seen this. But what I wanted to show you that you could do with the web version of this is if you click on the download button and then click Excel, what will end up happening is all of your reports will show up 
in one Excel file and every tab will represent a different report that was in that report group. Now it will export exactly how you had your detail level. So if you had just financial level, then every page would just represent the financial level of the report. But if you had the account level and transaction level, then you would get all of those tabs as well in a single Excel workbook. So the interacting of a report room. So what I wanted to, to kind of show you today was some of the, the features of once you've generated a report, what can you do with it to make it a little bit more interactive? That you can actually attach comments to rows, you can copy those comments from one version to the next version, you can create very simplistic charts, We're not, I'm not going to overemphasize that one because the, the charting can be um, a little on the um, slim slide here, uh, you know, through through web, uh, you know, through a desktop viewer, but being able to jump through reports into key areas and being able to um, find values and things like that. So we're gonna we're gonna show you some of the interactive capabilities. Now this is a, just a quick reference guide of the web view. So when you actually open up an individual report, you're going to notice that you've got a whole bunch of icons down at the bottom now. And with CU15, they added a whole bunch of new ones as well. So if you run a report with a tree, over in the corner you're going to be able to click on the reporting tree so that you can see the different levels of your organization. They've added a new report option so that you can rerun the report with a different report date if you choose. You've got the go to button that allows you to jump to key lines for faster display. So if you've got a page, a report that's maybe two or three pages long, it allows you to go to key areas of the report without having to scroll. Show button allows you to see those charts and comments, um, allows you to do some summary features and looking at things, previous versions of reports. They've added a new print button and this is probably the biggest one that I think people would value out of web viewer is being able to actually print to an XPS file. Previously people had issues with the web viewer that it only would print one page at a time and it wasn't really formatted in the nicest way. Um, and now this new print feature allows you to get a little bit better printing when you're printing from the web page. And then you do still have the ability on an individual report basis to export to Excel or to actually open the report in the report viewer or the desktop viewer. So the first thing we're going to look at is the report options. So if you click on the report options, it's going to open up this panel over here on the side that it will now allow you to regenerate this report for a different time frame. Now I'm sure... Um, you're still going to have security features involved here that, you know, depending on your security, gives you the rights to be able to do this kind of thing or not. We're obviously logged in as administrator, so, you know, I can show you all the functionality, but um, you would choose your report date and then just click the OK button, and it would regenerate this report for a different time frame. The next option is the interactive for part of inner is, is being able to add comments. And I'm going to do like a demo portion of this one. So this is just a screenshot um, so that you can actually see what we're talking about so that you have notes later on as to what kinds of things that we actually talked about. Um, but I will show this part as a, as a demo later on. But being able to add comments and then being able to copy the comments from one version to another and being able to even add them down at an account, a transaction level, you know, and then being able to actually export all of that information into an Excel file. The ability to actually be able to see reports um, side by side, you know, because when you open these up, it's going to open up on, on separate tabs, and now because those are separate tabs, you can actually maneuver those around in your page, and you can actually even use the snap-in feature that that comes with anything past Windows 7 to be able to, to, to force those to, to auto-fit to your page so that you can see, you know, reports on a side-by-side -side basis. Or if you have got two monitors, you can actually throw one report on one monitor and another report on another monitor and be able to look at those on a side-by-side -side basis. 
We also have the, the jump menu or the go-to menu to allow you to jump to different lines. So if you click the go-to button, it's going to pop out a fly menu that is essentially going to give you quick links to the, um, the description and the TOT lines of your report. So in this case, we've got sales or we've got total sales. Um, if you click on any one of those, it'll take you, it'll jump you right to that section. So the, the headings that come up are things that are actually defined as calculations or descriptions in your row definition. So those get automatically created. The next is the ability to actually take a very detailed report and if you click the show button, then you can click on the summary lines and it'll take a report that's got all this detail and allow you to then summarize it down into just the, 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 basically the calculated lines and the description lines again. So essentially kind of the same as like the go-to areas, it's going to like condense that report all the way down. So at this point then you could then print a summary version of your very detailed report. And this is something that you can do in the web viewer, but you can't really do the summary feature in the desktop viewer. So I kind of alluded to this a little bit, but the, this was an, a new button that they added was the print button over in the corner. And so what that allows you to do is when you print, print, press the print icon, at this point now it gives you the ability to choose your detail level. So if you've got this going all the way down to a transaction level, but you really only need to print the financial level or maybe you just need to print the account level, it gives you that option right from the web viewer to be able to choose what pieces that you want to print. The orientation will default to portrait, but then at that point you can change it if you want to have this go out to landscape and have it actually fit the content to the page. <clears throat> And then you would just print the print button. And what it essentially does is it will create a XPS file of this report. Now, if you were in the report group and you hit the print button, it will create an XPS file of all the reports in that report group. So this would be a great way to be able to run five reports. And if you needed to print them, be able to hit that button and all, it would print all five pages. And it should use the defaults that you have set on the report. But you could, you know, generate that to an XPS file and see what that actually looked like. One of the things I usually like to show people are some tips and tricks while they're actually working. And depending on the size of your monitor, sometimes you just don't have enough real estate on your screen to be able to see everything that you want to look at, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot things. Now, this has nothing to do with the web viewer, other than I thought it was a cool tip, so I wanted to show you, it is being able to hide the navigation bar. Now, the navigation bar is actually this section right here in your report. And if you hit the Alt and the F1 key at the same time, or you go up to the menu bar and you hit the View and the Navigation pane, then it's going to make your screen look like this, which gives you just lots more room to be able to see the information on your page because you're hiding you know, those couple extra inches on, on the left-hand side of your screen. Now, you can actually do this in the rows. So if you're actually in Designer, you know, it'll hide that so when you're in a row or in a column or a tree, it gives you a little extra space. And you can also do it when you're in the desktop viewer. And it will hide that navigation bar. So if you ever have a report that say has, you know, 20 or, you know, 12 or more columns, and maybe you've got 14, 16 columns going across the page and you just need a little bit more room to be able to see the entire report in your desktop viewer, you can also hide the navigation bar there as well so that you can see a little bit more of the report itself. Some of the other things that we're going to talk about, and I'll, and I'll give you a little demo on, is being able to go right from, and you can do this whether you're in the web viewer or in the desktop viewer, but it allows you to go, once you've drilled down to the account level of a report, and you're, you're on an, a particular account, it allows you to drill back into your ERP package. So whether you're in AX or you're in um, GP, 
what it will do, and this is an example of a GP screen, but it's going to actually pull up the detail inquiry screen from, from GP. So now you're in GP and you're at, you'll notice that the date range matches the date range for the column that you are on. So if you clicked on a month of column, your dates would fill in for just that month. If you happen to be on a year to date column, so it filled in the year to date uh, for this account, and now I'm seeing all the transactions that make up that balance. Now I'm in GP. I can use the detail inquiry screen just like I would if I were to actually open it up manually. I can click on a journal entry, drill back to it, and if there's source document, I can drill all the way back to it. So now right from a management reporter report, you can drill all the way back into the source document of a particular account so that if you're doing troubleshooting and you're trying to figure out why things are so high, you can actually get into why this account looks so odd. So if you're doing a budget versus actual type report or something like that, you can actually see why does actual look so far off a of budget and drill into the, the source documents to find out, you know, is that a valid cost or expense or revenue or whatever that's been booked to that account or they can somebody hit the wrong account. We're going to show you some collaboration as well. So once you've got this um, created, how you can publish, well, you know, to an Excel file, how you can schedule reports and publish reports to SharePoint if you're actually using a SharePoint or a network directory location if you like, that you can actually email reports with um, the SharePoint alerts or if you just want to email a link directly from the report viewer, we can do that as well. With security, you can, there is ways that you can set it up so that you can make it very personalized for the people that are actually logging in and viewing things online. If you're going to send those emails out, let's say you have a departmental report that um, you know, only certain people that are associated to those departments should actually be able to see that. Rather than having to generate that report multiple times so that you can say, okay, send this to, you know, the accounting department over here and the, the marketing department over there, um, you can run one report and if you embed the security into a tree, that when you generate that report and they go to open it in the web viewer, they will only be able to look at the links that you give them or to the to the you know the, the portions of that tree that you give them excuse me that you give them rights to. You do have the ability to schedule reports on a periodic basis and then again we were talking about publishing those reports to SharePoints and to multiple locations. Um, within within the library, <clears throat> and this this is talking about being able to email those reports and having SharePoint set up the alerts to give you an email that you've published to a library or whatever. So at this point, I want to show you a demo of being able to do some of that kind of stuff. Okay, so. In our designer, here's an example of our report group. Now, one of the things that I usually like to show people as well, because sometimes they miss this, is you do have this button next to the generate button. What this button does is if you hover over it, it'll tell you the last time this report was generated. Now, we happen to be in a report group, but it would work the same way as if you were in a individual report definition. If you hover over it, it's going to show you the last time this report was generated. If you click on that button, it's actually going to open up the last time you generated that report. So you don't really have to regenerate a report. So like say you generated a report in five minutes and you closed it and five minutes later you wanted to look at that report again. You don't necessarily have to regenerate it. You could go out to the library and manually open it. Or if you were actually in the designer, you could just click on that button and it would just reopen that report. Now, depending on how you've got your uh, options set up, it's either going to open it up in the web viewer or it will open it up in the desktop viewer. 
which I don't have it open here this way, but you can actually toggle back and forth. If you go to Tools, Options, by default, when you install Management Reporter, it's actually going to use the web viewer as your default viewer. But if you'd rather use the desktop viewer, you can click on that little checkbox that says Use Management Report Viewer as the default viewer. And then when you click on that, you don't have to regenerate. Now when you click on it, it's actually going to open that up in the desktop viewer rather than the web viewer. Now we have the report actually open in the desktop viewer and the web viewer at the same time. So anything that I would do over here, I could potentially do over here and vice versa. So you can have the same report open in both. And sometimes that can be very helpful, especially if you are going to be able to send links out to your end users and have them look at it through the web viewer. But you always like using the desktop viewer and maybe they don't have rights to the desktop viewer, they only have rights to use the web viewer, you need to see what they see. So being able to toggle back and forth and be able to use either one is, is, is key, and especially because there's functionality that you can do in one that you can't do in the other and vice versa. So it's good to be able to toggle and, and be able to see both options. And there's going to be times that you may want to be able to, um, you know, do something that you can only do in the web viewer. <clears throat> okay, so now that we're in the web viewer, if you run a report down to the account level, you do have the ability to open have that drill back to the detail inquiry. Okay, so that was the account I was on, and I was in the web viewer. Okay, now in order to be able to drill back to GP, you do have to have GP open at the time that you're doing this. If you try and click on and drill down into it and you don't have GP open, you're going to get an error because it's an, it can't find it can't find um, the link to to get this running. So you do have to have GP open already. But then what it's going to do is it's, and it may not pop up, it may just open a screen down here at the bottom. So you'll have to watch your GP icon down at the bottom and, just, and, and look for the detail inquiry screen. So if I close that, so you'll notice what it looks like now. And when I click on it, just notice, did you see how that screen just kind of created a second? So you'll have to go open it because it doesn't automatically bring it to the front. So don't be alarmed if you're like, it's not working and it's not throwing any errors. Just hover over your GP and just make sure that it's not hidden underneath. But now you can see that it's actually opening up my account level for the time frame that I clicked on. So I was on the 2017. If I close this and I click on the 2016, and I open up my detail inquiry. Now you can see that I'm in historical. Okay. And I've got all my transactions here. So now if I click one, I can just click on the journal entry that that's associated to. <clears throat> and I can drill all the way back into the source document. Okay. Um, so I can do that from the web viewer, but I can also do that from the desktop viewer. So if I'm on sales, I can double click on that and I have to get all the way down to the account level so that I can see what account I'm on and you'll notice up here my icons okay so when I was back here at this level you'll notice I had the drill and whenever you have a drill button like this it's actually going to be the same as if you double clicked on it and went into it so if I close that again and I just click on this one it's going to actually open it up here and now when I click on the account you'll notice my dynamics button is now available. So now if I click on my dynamics button, it's going to do the same thing down here with here's my detail inquiry screen and it's going to open up that screen. I think I actually had it open up already. So let me close that and re-click it. So now there's my 2017. 
So now if I click on a journal entry, I can actually drill into it. And if there was a source document, I can actually drill all the way back to the source document to see where that actually came from. Because now I'm just in GP. Okay? So you'll have to look at your icons up here to see where you're available and be able to you know, drill, the, drill back into those things. Now, when it comes to comments, you'll notice that you have a comment button up here. So if you click on the comment, you can actually type in. You can type in a comment. Hopefully your spelling's better than mine. And you'll notice that it puts a little um, post-it note over there so you can identify that there's a comment with that. Now, say you've run this report a couple times, you can actually copy your comment from one version to the next. So if you have multiple versions of this report run and you want to copy it, like say you had comments that were from a previous version, you could copy them up to the new version so that you don't lose any of those comments. So maybe you have people that are doing budget versus actual analysis and they're making comments as to why why their budget, why they're off from budget, or you know whatever, um, and you want to keep all of those comments, you can actually copy your comments from from one version to the next. Um, if you add comments, <clears throat> you may have to refresh your report, but you will see the comments here. So you can actually add a comment here as well. So if I add a comment in the web viewer. and save it, <clears throat> rather than getting a little um, post-it note, you get a little speech bubble. Okay, so that's how you would know that you actually have comments associated to things. So if those comments weren't showing, you could click on your show button, and you can hide those if you need a little bit more real estate, and if you click on those, you'll be able to actually be able to see those comments. <clears throat> so wherever you put that, you're going to have a comment. Now. If you're in the desktop viewer, and I'm going to show this from the desktop viewer because it's a little bit easier to see, when you go to actually print this and you had comments associated to something, now I think I put that actually on the account level, so I'm going to try putting a comment on this level just so you can see it on this one. When you actually go to print this, you do have the option to include the comments. So when, if you click on the preview, we'll make this so we can actually read it. Hmm. You should see it over here. Not sure why you're not seeing it there, but when I did this the other way, you did see it. And you do have the option when you're actually exporting this. to Excel to include the comments as well. Okay, so if you were to export that, it would take your comment and put it in Excel as well. Your tabbing features over here, you do have the go-to features over here when you're in the desktop viewer as well. Okay. So coming back over to the web viewer, here's the print option. So you can choose if you want just the account level, the transaction level. We didn't actually run the report to a transaction level. Fitting the content to a page width, changing your margins, and then you can hit print. <clears throat> Down over here, you've got the download. So you can actually export to Excel, or you can actually, if you wanted to, if you sent it to the web viewer, you can hit this management report viewer and it will actually open this report in the desktop viewer. So if you forget to toggle back and forth or you just need to have this one report look at it or whatever, you can open it directly from the web viewer into the desktop viewer as well. Now, your end users would need to have access to software to be able to do that. So this might be something that's more of for you know the accounting group that might have the client access available to them for the desktop viewer 
Um, but if you're in accounting and you need to be able to do this, that would be an excellent way to be able to get back in without having to go back to the report, switch your default views, blah, blah, blah. You can write from the web viewer, open up the desktop viewer, and now you're in the desktop viewer. Okay. Um, when you go to download, there are going to be certain things that default. Okay, so when you're in the desktop viewer and you want to export to Excel, you'd click the Excel button and it stops at this page and it gives you an option to say, do you want to do the current view, do you want to do the current reporting unit, you know, you've got these options so that you can choose if you want to include everything, the financial view, the account view, if you had transactional level, you know, that sort of thing. It gives you some Excel options that you can change on the fly so that when you export this to Excel, you can make it a little bit more customized to what you actually want in that Excel file. However, when you do it in the desktop or in the web viewer and you want to download this report to Excel, what you see is what you're going to get and how you generated this report. So if we come back over here to the designer and you actually click and you look at your distributions, the way you generated this report and the way you have this configured in terms of your options here for Excel and the way you've got this configured here for detail level, provisional level, that sort of thing, when you export from the web viewer, you're going to get all of that in the Excel file. Okay? Same thing when you're doing with the monthly reports. When you download and you send this to Excel and then you open that in Excel, Actually, I thought I had it open in Excel already. Hang on, let me re-download it. <clears throat> when you do the report group and you open this, you'll notice that it just created me a file. It didn't ask me what, what pieces I wanted. So here's my balance sheet. I've got my balance sheet, my balance sheet summary, and my income statement. Well, here's my balance sheet with a financial version. Here's the account level. Here's my balance sheet summary, financial, in the account level. And then here's my summary for my income statement. And then I'm going to get all the branches that were associated to that tree because it didn't stop and ask me. However, put all my stuff in one file. So if you set up your report group, appropriately, you can actually get it to create an Excel file that gives you exactly what you're looking for. You may have to go in and change your report group and maybe you only send things to the financial level or if you need things, certain, certain reports to be financial and certain reports to be account and certain reports to go all the way down to a transaction level, you do have the ability over here to change so that you're not overriding those features and it uses the individual features of the reports that are in that report group. Now note, you will lose the ability to choose your date. So if you do this, it is going to look at the default date on the report. So however you've set this up as your default. So you're going to want to make sure that every report that's in your report group has the same default base period, whether it's just you're using system, current, C minus one, plus one, whatever, so that when you generate five reports, all of them are at whatever the default was, that you don't get some that are giving you August and some that are giving you June. Okay, so you'll need to check your default date on your individual reports if you're going to override your, your report group. Okay? Let's see. Let's go back to my... Oh, I guess that was at questions. So I guess we're at a good point that um, if anybody has any questions, we can um, kind of address those at this point. Sounds great. So on the right-hand side, everybody, there is an area that says questions. We do have a few of them in the queue here. So type them in and we'll get them addressed. Um, how do you, uh, let me see, how do you create a report group? Oh, good question. All right. So over here, you've got the panels, just like you have row definitions, column definitions. You have one for report group. So you'll notice that this new button changes depending on which panel that you're on. And you do still have the option to, to do the drop down, but if you're on the report group and you hit new, it's going to bring up a blank one. 
So at this point, you just hit the Add button, and you would choose the reports in question. And you can use the Shift key, you can use the Control key to, to highlight you know, various reports. Then you add them in. Now it is going to run them in the order that you see here. So if you have certain reports that are dependent on other reports, you may need to use the up and down buttons so that they run in a certain order. The order that nice. you place them in the group here, you will see them export in that order. So if you want them in a specific order in your Excel file, then make sure you put them in this, the right order over here. So at this point, this right. is where you would save this, and then you can choose your group distribution and report distribution. Excellent for that. All right. Um, do each MR report users need a separate GP user license for drill down functionality in MR reports? In order to be able to drill into GP, yes, you would need to have a valid user because you have to have man, you have to have GP open. So if you can't get into GP because you don't have a license or you don't have a user ID, then you would not be able to drill into GP because you would need to have GP open already in order to drill into it. Hopefully that answered that question correctly. Exactly. All right. What versions of GP does the drill down into account detail work for? This was something you should be able to do all the way back to like the very beginnings of Manager Reporter. It's an, it was not associated with a specific CU. You should be able to do this. There have been issues with previous versions. Like I think I want to say starting with GP 2013, that when you try to click on the link, there was a registry fix that needs to be installed. So if you are on like 2013 and you can't drill into it because it's giving you an error, we may need to just, it's a quick batch file that uh, uh, fixes um, our registry error and it, it takes like two seconds to run. Okay. All right. Another question is, um, today I'm using FRX and interested in moving to MR what steps would be taken? All your reports can migrate. There are some limitations and some functionalities that you may be using in FRX that don't migrate over, and we have a list of those that we can provide you if you need. You know, examples would be like if you're doing um, effective dates or if you're using um, some Excel linking or if you're doing row linking, some of that stuff would have to be to modified to get those to move over. And we do have a, a best practice list that we can provide you and show you what kind of cleanup you need to do in FRX. But we would just essentially migrate those reports over. And there's usually if you do the cleanup beforehand, there's only a little bit of stuff that we would need to tweak to get them to actually work um, in Management Reporter. And that's Hopefully that just like the question. or anything else when you're making a change, it's a good time because most people using FRX have been using it for a long time and they could have mm -hmm. over 200 reports. Um, that's where I've seen it um, working as a project and going back to people and finding out what's really necessary to move forward as well. So that's, uh, that's really, really important. Usually, okay, um, if we spend a little bit of time, I can help you know, get things cleaned up. If you if you need help with um, getting your spec set cleaned up, that's definitely something that we could help you with. Yep, very good. And one person said maybe this is the long webinar, but how do I start to create a new report from scratch? And I also want to mention um, here, Annette, as well, that we do have a YouTube channel. So if you go out to YouTube and type in Interdyne BMI, you are going to see over a hundred different webinar recordings that you can look at, and there are some there on Management Reporter, so other educational opportunities for you as well. So from Georgia's perspective, um, like just starting from scratch, uh, what are some good tips and processes that you should be looking at? Well, a lot of times I look to, I, I need to see, you know, okay, what does the end product need to look like? And a lot of times people have a, an Excel version or whatever. So that's perfect. If you have an Excel version, then that makes it even easier. The first thing you usually you're going to want to do is take a look at what information do I have going down the page versus what information do I have going across the page. Down the page is going to be what accounts do I need in this report. So you're going to create a row from that. So to create a row, you would just click on Row, and then you'd hit New. 
So from here, this is where it's helpful if you have an Excel file, because if you have partial of what you'd want something to look at, look like, so say this is the income statement that you want to create. You can actually copy and paste this information from Excel right into your row. And then from here, what you're doing is you're defining what accounts go on each row. So if you double click on here, you can pick the account, the division, whatever. And I'm obviously doing this at a very, very high level because I'm going to explain all of this stuff. But I wanted to kind of give you the 10,000 foot view and be able to quickly start with things, okay? So you can copy and paste things in. This is going to give you the accounts that are going down the page. So if we actually open an income statement that's already set up, here it's giving you the accounts that go on each line. And then you're going to pair that up with a column, and columns give you your time frame. So if we come back and look at our report, here we've got, you know, March of this year, March of last year, March of the previous, two years ago, three, three years ago. Right? So we've got a year-over-year -year comparison of our uh, income statement going on here. So these are the time frames, and that's where you're going to set, create a column that's going to give you the time frames that you're looking for, whether you want month of, year to date, budget information, you're going to create calculated columns. Once you get your columns created, then you're going to go into your report definition and you're going to say, okay, I want to use this row and I want to use this column to actually create my report. So if you think about it kind of like your closet and in your closet you have shirts and you have pants. You're going to combine those together to create an outfit. But you can create multiple outfits from the combinations of the shirts and pants that you have in your closet, right? So you have a red shirt and a black pair of pants that would make a nice outfit. But then you can also use that red shirt with a pair of gray pants and make a different outfit. So if you think of shirts like your rows and columns like your pants, you're just mixing and matching things together to create a report. And then trees give you the dimensionality of your reporting. So if you have different responsibility segments within your organization, whether it be multiple companies or maybe you have departments, locations, divisions as segments within your company, you can use those trees then to actually give you the, the dimensionality of your reporting and, and give me an income statement by company or give me an income statement by department. So hopefully that gives you kind of a high level um, of kind of the step-by-step the -step process. Here's another question for you. Um, can you put in multiple reporting tree definitions in a report group? Well, in a report group, you're putting in report definitions. So each report definition is associated to potentially a tree. So if you have three reports and they all use three different trees, then that's how you would get those in. So if we come back over here to our report group, and we've got these three, four reports in here. This one might be using one tree. This might be using a different tree. This might be using a different tree. So if you're using a tree within your report definition, then it's going to ignore the company up here because it's going to use, it's going to use the tree to determine that. Hopefully that answers your question. Was that a yes or a no? Let me know if that didn't, and I can go into that a little bit further. All right, here's another one. This comes from Kathy. In the report groups, can you have a report run twice? Once with the whole dollars and also in thousands. Okay, so in order to be able to do something like that, you'd have to create two different report definitions. Because again, you're only putting the report definition in here. There's nowhere in here that you can change the parameters of a particular report to do it in a different way. So in order to be able to do that, if you actually look at your report definition, and you probably already know this because you probably run this this way, oops, if we go into our report definition, you know, under your settings is where you're going to put your rounding. So if one time you need to have it in whole dollars and one time you need to have it in whole billions, then you would need to create two different reports and maybe the report definition defines that this one is, 
you know, rounded and this one's not. And then now you have two different report definitions. You would come to your report group and just choose both of those report definitions. And one would give you rounded and one would give you non-rounded. Love that idea. Excellent, Kathy. Hopefully that helps you out. All right. Here is another one from Georgia. It is, um, this is pretty close to how FRX is set up. Um, thank you very much. It is. I mean, if, if you're using FRX and you're looking to make that leap over to Management Reporter, the foundation is very similar. You still have rows, you still have columns, you still have trees. For the most part, they're set up the same way. They've added functionality when you're looking at a row or looking at a tree, you know, in terms of how you actually define what the row is, you know, now you actually define it by the actual dimension rather than having to do main account and using trees be able to identify the various different segments that you're trying to pull in. So this part is really added to the flexibility, but if you were to open up Manage Reporter and you know how to use FRX, and somebody had migrated your reports over, you would not, your leap would not be very big to be able, I mean, you open up a report, it's going to look very similar. You still have the four tabs like you did. They might be named slightly different and things might look a little bit different, but you're going to stumble upon the generate and you're going to see that the report date's over here. You're going to be able to at least run things. So you're you're going to be you're going to have that comfort level cuz it's there there's just added functionality that you need to know about excellent all right and you know what i accidentally deleted a question that someone was asking about a certain cell um if you could type that back in i apologize i pushed the wrong button on that but they were asking specifically what something meant so if they wouldn't mind typing that in again or get in touch with Annette as well. Um, default base period is what Annie was asking about. What does that default mean? Base default base period over here? Okay. Mm -hmm. So on your report, when you open it, it's going to default the base period and the base year. Okay, so that's just uh -huh. the default. At any point, you could come in here and depending on what you have defined in your ledger, you can choose to override the report date and generate this report. And you'll notice that my default base period didn't change. It just, I was changing the default, the, the base period and the base year, not the default uh -huh. base period. Okay, so when I open up another report, this one might have a different default base period. See this one saying, see, now these are really funky. You would probably not ever set your reports up this way, but because this is a demo environment, you know, we're trying to get to 2015 and whatever, it's changing these. More likely, yours is probably going to be set up either at current or maybe at system minus one, you know, um, and, it, and it's going to, you know, be set up like that. But the way these are set up, it's just like when you open it, what does it default to? And then you can override it. But the where this really comes into play is in your report groups, if you don't override the company, or if you, you say don't override it, you'll notice that you lose your report date, your ability to change it for everything. So it's going to use whatever is on the individual report. So you're going to want to make sure that these all match your reports so that, like I said, you don't run a report and get one that gives you April and one that gives you June. Okay. So kind of when you set it up, you set it up. Well, as soon as you set it like if you create a brand new one, mm -hmm. it's probably going to default. Oops. Yeah, it's going to default it with system minus one. And then you can change this to be whatever you want. Okay. Excellent. Well, that this has been super, and you've done a great job at troubleshooting some specific questions. So I hope for everybody on the line that this has been great. Um, provide feedback when we close out. There will be a little uh, poll that you can answer. It's always important for the presenters to understand um, how it went and if you have any additional questions. And again, Annette's got her email address, Annette Brown at Internine, and I should say Annette.Brown at Internine.com. She is one of our experts on Management Reporter. would love to help you out. Thank you, Annette. Any last words of advice before we let folks go? Play with it. 
play with your web viewer. You're not going to break anything by pushing buttons to see what it does. So, whoops, wrong screen. So definitely go in and, you know, go into your web browser and, you know, download it, print it, you know. One of the things I didn't show you was the show previous reports. Kind of play with this to see what this actually does. This is, this is, we're going to have another webinar coming up talking about the report library and security a little bit more in detail. And we'll talk about how this comes into play when you're using your, your previous reports. So make sure you guys all sign up for the next webinar because we'll, we'll go into that part a little bit more in more detail. Excellent. So we've got at least a monthly webinar on MR so you can learn how to report much better. I also want to note, too, that if you want a copy of today's presentation, of course, everyone has access to the recording out on our YouTube. But if you want these um, slides, um, email me at use, uh, user experiences at interdynebmi.com, and I'll make sure that you get them. Annette, great job. Thank you so much, and I hope everybody learned a lot, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you very awesome. much. Bye-bye. Happy reporting, everyone. Bye-bye.